Hi everyone, so in this video we'll be taking a closer look at the relational model. So in the relational model, a database is a set of uh, tables, a collection of tables. So uh, basically this is one table with some columns. This is another table with uh, some more columns and um, these will again have entries in them. So uh, a collection of these is a database in the relational model and uh, we call these uh, tables as uh, relations. So these are known as relations. And uh, these columns right here are uh, known as attributes. So that's one attribute. This entire column is one attribute and uh, this is another attribute this is another attribute so we call these columns as attributes and uh, when it comes to these attributes uh, or columns there is some domain associated with uh, the values that an attribute can have so for example an int uh, will be a domain uh, that means that the only values it can take are integer values uh, it cannot take decimal values or uh, some strings. Uh, so next, uh, floating point decimal values can uh, another uh, can be another uh, domain. So uh, in this case, it'll be decimal values. It still can't take any string or something. And uh, similarly, you can have uh, a domain uh, as characters. You can have a domain as strings. And uh, Another interesting thing here is that a domain can also be uh, an enumerated domain. So uh, what it means to have an enumerated domain is, uh, let's say I'm saying that uh, there's a column called gender. Uh, in that case, it can only have values M and F. So uh, although the M and F are uh, characters, but the domain of this column is not any character. It has to be one of M and F. So that's what enumerated domains mean. Um, so the next thing is uh, these rows right here, this row right here. Uh, so these rows are uh, basically entries in the database and these are known as uh, tuples. So uh, every entry is a tuple and uh, basically uh, one entry in the database, one tuple will have a value for every attribute of that table. Um, so this entry right here uh, will have a value for C1, C2 and C3. These are the columns right here. So this will have this will be a tuple which is C1, uh, some value for uh, the column C1, some value for the column C2 and some value for the column C3. So uh, that's what this entry means. Uh, that's known as a tuple. And uh, of course, some of these might be empty if uh, we want to allow those to be empty. For example, let's say I have a column for email ID and uh, someone doesn't have an email ID or hasn't provided one. We can uh, keep, that, uh, keep that cell in the table empty. So um, these are... Uh, some terminology associated with the relational model. First one is relation, the second one is attribute, and the third one is tuple. Uh, these basically correspond to a uh, table, a uh, column, and a row. So uh, the next thing is uh, another very important part of every table in a relational model is a key. And um, a key is basically uh, something that's used to identify a row uniquely. So uh, a key is associated to every tuple um, and uh, the key needs to be unique for every uh, tuple in uh, one table. So uh, keys cannot be empty or uh, null. They, they have to have a value and that value needs to be unique. And uh, keys can often also be a combination of uh, attributes. So uh, let's just understand this with an example. Let's say we have uh, a student table. Uh, for that, the uh, key might be 
the student ID itself that's the key you can identify a student uniquely based on his ID but uh, for another table which uh, may have let's say uh, let's say there's some name which can be uh, let's say the first name for two people can be uh, the same the last name can again be the same but uh, we claim that a combination of first name and last name cannot be the same so uh, we can have the key as first name column and last name column together form the key so uh, even that's possible but uh, we must remember that the key has to be unique for every uh, every tuple in a table and uh, it cannot be empty and uh, when it comes to a combination of attributes being the key um, the only condition that holds is that uh, all of the columns cannot be uh, all of the entries corresponding to the key columns cannot be null so uh, what that means is let's say I have a combination of first name and last name as the key um, I can still have a person whose last name is unknown and uh, so that uh, entry in the table that cell is empty I just have the first name uh, and then a blank uh, that's a valid thing to do even the last even though the last name is part of the key but uh, I can never have something like uh, no entry corresponding to first name and no entry corresponding to the second name both of these together can't be empty and uh, when some row in a table wants to refer to uh, a row in another table it uses the key to do so so uh, for example if I want to uh, store the data for a course uh, I don't need to store the store every student's name or anything in that all I have to do is uh, store the student ID and uh, then I can look up the student's name from the uh, student table uh, that I have so uh, when I want to store a student somewhere I would store it by his uh, unique ID so we use the key to do so and uh, one interesting thing here is that uh, database systems uh, use a specific way to store data uh, such that it's very easy to get a row based on its key so if you give it a key it'll get you uh, the row corresponding to that key really fast so uh, when it comes to database management we uh, don't usually worry about the algorithm uh, that's going on behind the scenes but uh, it's just good to know that it uh, good to know that we can find uh, the key based on uh, find a row based on the key very easily next I want to talk about um, querying in relational databases so uh, querying basically refers to uh, retrieving or updating data and uh, some queries are easy to pose some are difficult so uh, easy to pose queries um, or sometimes they may be difficult to pose and sometimes queries are easy to execute for the database system so so behind the scenes it can uh, execute the query really fast uh, that's what it means by easy to execute the interesting thing to note here is that uh, these two things need not necessarily be correlated so not correlated uh, what that means is that uh, there might be queries which are easy to pose but uh, difficult to execute and uh, vice versa as well so uh, there's no definite relation between these two and uh, I also want to talk about some properties of queries in relational databases and uh, the first property that I want to talk about is the uh, closure property so uh, what the closure property means in general for any elements is that uh, when we perform some operation um, the, the element that we get after we perform that operation is uh, the same as the elements that we perform the operation with uh, 
So, for example, we can say that integers are closed under addition, uh, meaning that when we add two integers, we get an integer. Similarly, uh, relations are closed under queries. Um, let me just write that down. Relations closed under queries. This means that uh, when we perform a query on one relation or multiple relations, uh, what we get in return is a relation again. So uh, we get a table itself and uh, even though the value uh, we might just get a single value or a single row but uh, still that's considered to be part of a table. So uh, even if we're uh, getting just one value in return we'll get the value uh, something like this. Uh, there'll be a column which uh, there'll be a single column which has some uh, heading. So let's say we were trying to find uh, the sum of marks or the average of marks of all students. So uh, there'll be a column with the heading average and then this will contain the average. So uh, this thing right here is still uh, a table. Uh, it's still a relation. So uh, every time we perform a query, what we get in return is a relation itself. That's the closure property. And the second property that I want to talk about is uh, closely, closely related to the first one. And uh, that's known as the compositional property. What the compositional property means is uh, that I can run my second query on the result of a first query. And uh, this is actually only possible because uh, relations are closed under queries. So uh, because we get relations in return and uh, we run queries on relations only, so we can run a query on the result of uh, a first query that we had. So that's the compositional property. And uh, the last thing that I want to mention before we uh, end this video is that uh, there are two languages uh, that we'll focus on, two languages. Uh, the first one is uh, something known as relational algebra. Um, and relational algebra is basically a formal language uh, that we use to uh, describe queries. It's, uh, it's a more mathematical or a more formal language with a lot of symbols. Um, and the second language that I want to talk about is SQL. And uh, SQL is the actual language that is implemented. So uh, when I uh, run a computer, it uh, runs SQL. So SQL is what actually runs on a computer. But this again has at, it, at its base uh, relational algebra. Although there might be uh, some slight differences between these two, but SQL is basically derived from relational algebra. So uh, these are the two that we'll be focusing on um, and um, I also want to run a few uh, SQL uh, sessions parallel to these theory sessions that we have and uh, it might so happen that uh, these two, the theory that we're learning and the SQL we're learning might not always go in sync but I'll try to keep them as much in sync as possible. So stay tuned for the next video.